Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. We're chatting to Dr. Darren Green about bladder infections today. And we have our first caller on the line, Vilna Fenter, all the way from Durban. Vilna, good morning. And what is your question? Good morning, Dr. Darren. I would just like to find out I get bladder infection very, very often, at least every second to third month. Yeah. What is the alternative medicine that I can take rather than antibiotics all the time? I do take cranberry, 1,000 milligram or one a, a tablet a day, but it still doesn't seem to do it make a difference. Thank you, Vilna. Good question. Mm. I mean, she, she raises a very important point, which is antibiotic resistant in bladder infections. So what we have is due to people prescribing antibiotics far too easily and too regularly without finding the exact cause of the bladder infection, mm -hmm. we then have bugs that are becoming more and more clever in, in, def in their defenses yes. against our immunities. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you get antibiotic resistance and the most common uh, organism is E. coli which comes from the, the anal tract obviously, the, the rectal area and in women because it's so close in proximity to the urethra that it's very uh, you know, easy for the infection to reach the bladder. Yes. So in this case specifically with recurrent infections the first thing that needs to be done is a urine culture. That means we actually take the urine and we grow it on a specialized medium to, to look at which organism is causing the infection. Mm -hmm. The antibiotic that is then chosen is based on the organism's resistance or sensitivity to that antibiotic. Okay. Uh, besides that, if, if you still have a recurrent infection, one would then look at the anatomy of the urinary tract, mm -hmm. looking, for example, at the drainage system, the bladder itself. Does it empty completely when, when you void or go to the toilet? Mm -hmm. Or is there a little bit of urine that stays behind, stagnant? And you, we, we know that stagnant water is never good anywhere for yeah. facilitating infection growth. Yeah. Uh, along with that, conservative measures or alternative measures would include increasing a fluid intake. Cranberry juice, for example, prevents the, the bacteria in the bladder from attaching to the inner lining of the bladder wall. Mm. So those are practical ways that, that one can do, can uh, make quite a big impact. But yeah. certainly, one would want to treat systematically and do a culture. Yeah, so I think obviously your first point of call is to consult your medical practitioner then. We have another caller on the line. Natalie, good morning and what is your question? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Katrifo. Good morning, Doctor. Uh, my question is whether stress can cause blood infection. Um, I had a stressful time yeah. in October. My yeah. aunt passed away. And um, coming from somebody that never really had blood, blood infections yes. before, uh, before this infection actually took three antibiotics before it went away. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So stress indeed. And, and the, man the manifestations of stress involve pH change of the body as yes, well, from exactly. acid production in exactly. the stomach causing gastric ulcers and increased acid production, all the way through to lowering your immunity through to a lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. So when you have a suppressed immunity due to stress, you can imagine then that you are open to any op opportunistic infection, yes. uh, whereas before your natural mechanisms of your immunity, immune system might kick in earlier, yeah. they delayed because your immunity is suppressed due to stress. So insomnia, a big, big component as mm. to lowering our resistance. Yeah. A great answer then, and I think uh, stress is never good for anything in life, so try and decrease as, as much as possible. We had a question from another caller asking about uh, weak bladders. Are those also a contributing factor to bladder infections, and what causes those? Yes, so weak bladders are basically when someone can't control the sneeze or the cough. They develop what's called stress incontinence, and as a lot of people get older, they have a little, uh, if they jump, jump on the trampoline or have a sneeze, oh, there's a little bit that leaks out, and that's mm. due to the poor tone in the bladder neck of those muscles okay. that can be improved to a large degree with uh, what they call the Kegel exercises. Mm -hmm. They are actually physiotherapists designated to those specific exercises right now. Yeah. But one would certainly want to look at the age of the patient. One would mm -hmm. want to look at uh, what the birthing history is, for example, in terms yes. of maintaining the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, looking at your, your frequency as to how, how often you do go to the toilet and plan your routines around bathroom time. Yeah. And speaking of the age of uh, patients, another caller asked about uh, the fact that she works at um, an old age home where she has to take care of, of elderly uh, citizens. And yes. uh, how does do actually adult nappies contribute to uh, bladder infections? Certainly. And imagine the time that is spent in the wet nappy, just as in children, in adults exactly the same, the longer the urine stays around the urinary tract, specifically yeah. the entrance to the urinary tract, the, 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 the easier it is to contract an infection. Yes. That urine then acts as, a, as, a, as with the contaminants on the skin in the perineum and so forth, 
that are easily introduced uh, into the, int the entrance to the meatus, basically, mm -hmm. to the urethra, facilitating the blood infection. Yeah. Doctor, thank you very much as always. Absolute we really appreciate pleasure. your expertise, Dr. Darren Green there, chatting bladder infections. And of course, we do this every Tuesday where we talk medical health. Right now, though, let's catch up with entertainment news and what's happening in the world of our stars.